Israeli officials obtained Hamas's plan point by point more than a year before October 7th attacks happened. Wow. Accor I mean, according to the New York Times, how do you read how do you read something like that and not get super distracted? Can we talk about it a little bit? Yeah. Okay, so um, according to the New York Times, okay, the Israeli government obtained Hamas's plan of attack on October 7th, a year in advance before they carried it out. However, it was decided that the plan was too complex for Hamas to execute. So they underestimated Hamas. And remember, it took the IDF at least six hours to respond to Hamas's atrocities. And it was because the IDF was in the occupied West Bank protecting the illegal settlements built by the settlers, okay? So Netanyahu completely neglected the border with the Gaza Strip. And as a result, the IDF didn't respond in time. And more importantly, apparently they knew that Hamas was planning this a year in advance, point by point. And just underestimated Hamas, like ugh, they don't have the sophistication or the capacity or capability to carry out these atrocities. Oops, looks like they did. The approximately 40 page document, which the Israeli authorities codenamed Jericho Wall, outlined point by point exactly the kind of devastating invasion that led to the deaths of about 1,200 people, the Times said, adding the following. The translated document, which was reviewed by the New York Times, did not set a date for the attack, but described a methodical assault designed to overwhelm the fortifications around the Gaza Strip, take over Israeli cities and storm key military bases, including a division headquarters. Hamas followed the blueprint with shocking precision. The document called for a barrage of rockets at the outset of the attack. Drones to knock out the security cameras and automated machine guns along the border, and gunmen to pour into Israel en masse in paragliders or motorcycles and on foot, all of which happened on October 7th. Yeah, you know, the what it reminds me of, of course, is the infamous bin Laden determined to attack inside the United States memo. That it was given to George Bush a month before September 11th. True, I thought about that too, but it wasn't as specific and point by point detailed as as this document was. Yeah, and and they had less time to respond than than Israel did and Netanyahu did. So that's that's a year that they had to respond, and and that happens with incredibly powerful forces, whether it's a nation, a sports team, etc. You get overconfident. And and it's another thing that ha happens because the right wing government of Israel has dehumanized Palestinians so much they probably thought these pe people can't figure out a sophisticated plot like that. I and so I think that that's a little bit of their racism coming back to bite them. But mainly it's because Netanyahu doesn't actually care about protecting Israel. He actually all he cares about is his own glory and status and title, and the more war and mayhem there is, the more he benefits. Guys, look, this is my speculation, I wanna be clear about that, okay? So I guess take it with a grain of salt, but I have to get this out. Remember who propped up Hamas, who funded Hamas, who saw Hamas as an important part of his strategy. Benjamin Netanyahu, in 2019, while speaking to members of the Likud party, he said, he admitted there is a verbatim quote out there, I shared it on the show this week, where he said, no, we have to fund Hamas, we have to prop up Hamas and basically pit them against the Palestinian Authority. And then they get this 40 page document a year in advance, a year before Hamas carries out their atrocities on October 7th, and they just decide to downplay it and ignore it. That's just strange to me. One intelligence analyst believed the plan to be more than just an aspiration for Hamas. I utterly refute that the scenario is imaginary, the analyst wrote in an email. It's a plan designated to start a war, it's not just a raid on a village. Those concerns were reportedly dismissed. That's wow. Yeah, uh, but remember like for Netanyahu, he, why was the IDF in the West Bank? Because the settlers keep attacking the Palestinians unjustly, and they're not there to protect the Palestinians, they're there to protect the settlers. Why? Because they want Netanyahu specifically, not all Israelis, but Netanyahu does. He wants more and more of the land in the West Bank. 
And then if there's a giant war that breaks out in Gaza, they've now put Israeli flags on all those mounds. And we've shown you that video before yeah. of the rubble. And we've shown you the cabinet ministers saying, yeah, we're just gonna take Gaza and we're gonna you know, basically administer it and occupy it. And so when there's all these factors combined together, because for right wingers all across the world, unfortunately, the more war and mayhem, the more popular they become. And they become wartime presidents and people get afraid. And when they get afraid, they go towards the right wing, Oh, protect us. But ironically, it's the right wing that never protects you. So yes, that's such a great point. That is such a great point. And that's, look, that was the appeal of Netanyahu's Likud party. Because the idea was, no, 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 we take national security seriously. I mean, we have a flavor of that among conservatives here in the United States. But the reason why the Israeli people kept supporting Likud and the more right wing politicians in the country is because, you know, I don't I don't begrudge them for feeling unsafe or feeling like, you know, they could be attacked at any minute. Like this has been an ongoing war. And so you have these politicians, these charlatans purporting to want to keep them safe and and really like puffing up their chest as the tough guys who will do so. And then you hear stories like this. By the way, one thing that I want to note is there is a possibility that this this memo was received by the Israelis prior to Netanyahu's current stint as the prime minister. So the Times did not say exactly when Israel obtained the plan, but more than a year would place the event before the beginning of Netanyahu's current stint as Israel's leader. Moreover, the report stated the plan was dismissed by Israel's military and intelligence officials. Netanyahu blamed the attacks on military and intelligence officials last month, but he later retracted those comments. And this is probably military and intelligence officials leaking it, going, okay, what now? Okay, you want to blame us? We all we know actually what happened. And by the way, the Netanyahu has been in office plenty long enough. That's he true. would have gotten the same exact intelligence. It's not like when a new prime minister comes and they don't give you the intelligence from earlier. And every government that Israel has had for a long time, unfortunately, has been massively right wing. And now all those former prime ministers like Naftali Bennett are coming around, going, "Oh yeah, kill them all." And so uh, that's a paraphrase. And but none of them are good guys. None of them are left wing. None of them are even close to moderate. Right. Right. They're all more extreme than the other. The national security minister is a former convicted terrorist. So that all of those right wingers would have seen that report and thought, oh, great, maybe we could get grab more land. And so that's not on behalf of Israel. That's on behalf of their own interests. And so look, here's one other thing. What what do Israelis actually want? They want peace and security. Like the you the whole point of a Jewish homeland is to finally be safe somewhere. Exactly, yeah. Right? But the right wing leaders in Israel don't want safety and security because then they wouldn't get reelected. So if they wanted a two state solution that would get, actually give them peace of mind, who would be the natural partner for that? Not Hamas, obviously, it would be Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Authority has already worked with them now for a long, long time as they occupy the West Bank. So why do you want to weaken the guys who actually would go towards peace mm -hmm. and strengthen the guys that would actually attack Israel? Exactly. And now that we know you had a memo saying they are going to attack Israel in the exact way that they did, Netanyahu and other right wingers in Israel chose to further finance, support, and and completely ignore the plans of Hamas, the terrorist group that brings you more war. Because they don't want a peace deal with the Palestinian Authority. A peace deal means that you don't need the right wing to protect you anymore. So look, back to Bush. Bin Laden determined to attack inside the United States. You know what Bush said? He, he To the intelligence official that delivered that memo for him, he was in his uh, ranch in Texas. He said, you covered your ass, now go home. And he stayed on vacation for a month. Jesus. These right wing leaders scare the crap out of you for their own power, but they never actually bring you security. They do the exact opposite. And unfortunately, this report is an excellent example of it. My God, Israel, it's not just about firing Netanyahu, almost everyone agrees to that now. Okay, most of Israel agrees to that, almost all the Israeli supporters agree to that. He, he was, he's not only a monster, but more importantly for the Israeli citizens, maybe not for the rest of the world, but for the Israeli citizens, he let them down. Of course, yeah. Right? In, in and he got them killed. One. Yeah. Right? Yep. So now having said that, guys, it's not just Netanyahu. 
If you just replace them with another right winger, they're gonna do the same exact thing. And some of them are even more radical than Netanyahu. You have to go towards peace. The whole point of the Jewish homeland was to have peace of mind. You do a peace deal with the Palestinian Authority, have them come into, come into Gaza, that way you could drive out Hamas. If you go to occupy Gaza, you will have Hamas do rebellion and resistance there till the end of time. But if you make a peace deal, then the Palestinian Authority has a credibility to be able to say, hey, we brought you peace, we got you a Palestinian state. Then they will be welcomed with open arms into Gaza, and then you could have a partner for peace. Israeli citizens, for God's sake, for your own sake, for the Palestinians' sake, for the world's sake, please go in that direction. Hey, thanks for watching that video. We really appreciate it, guys. And we appreciate it if you become members because that allows us to be independent, honest, progressive, all the things that you don't get from corporate media. And all of that is because of you guys. Hit the join button below and become one of us, become a young Turk.